Hello and welcome to Feature Preview. Today we'll talk about Callable and how this will change many of the things or at, at the very least if it doesn't actually change but it will make better because of a new way of using methods and reference to methods within GD script. In today's video I'll exemplify different operations such as a new version of signals, connections, lambda functions, binds, and how to call a callable also. And at the very end, I'll just exemplify everything with this very simple state machine, which I implemented in under 50 lines of code, with logic, by the way. So here I have created a simple scene with a timer and a button, two things that has signals, which is what the first example that we'll tackle. As you can see here, instead of doing timer dot no, connect, Though it's still there, it's possible to still use the, the old syntax. The new syntax of signals is like this. You do a dot, the name of the signal, dot connect. So connect to the right of the name of the signal. And inside, you essentially just give whatever method it is. So instead of giving something like this, which is prone to error, of course, this one will now simply say that uh, the method is not declared yet. So you actually need to create a proper method for it to work. So let's see this example. Uh, our timer will call timeout after one second and our button will call this print button. You'll see that it works normally calling timeout and the button is pressed. So this is a new signal version using external methods, but there's another way of doing this. And the other format uses Lambda functions. Thank you VNN for implementing this for us. And let's hop into the example. So let's convert this into the, the Lambda format. For that, you start with func, func. You give the parameters, uh, by default there is none. In the timeout, right? There's no parameter in this function. And you just put something on front. So we'll do the same on this one, func. And if we run now, everything just works normally as before. So this is the new format with Lambda functions. Of course, like this, you, you can also use in many other parts of the code and many other applications where callables are being updated. Let's take a look on one other one, which is tweens. So if you saw my, my latest video, you know that tweens are a little bit different now. You do create tween. And with a tween, I can animate things such as properties and methods. So I'll focus on the method one. And if you want more information, just check my latest video, which is in the description. And inside here, you'll notice that it accepts a callable, which is same thing as this. So, so for example, if I just put this function here and I'll just remove everything else and make sure that the tween uh, uses the beginning, the end, say five, the duration, say one second. And inside the function, this value is passed inside. So this will have a value now. So if I run this, we'll just print a bunch of buttons. I can also print the value itself and you'll see the value going from zero to five. And from within the function, you can do anything that you like. For example, if I get the icon, I can say dot position dot x equals the value times five or stuff like this. If I run, you'll notice that the icon moves from say it's zero to 25, right? Or I can just put some large number here and whatever help, whatever I want will happen within the tween. So with this, you can definitely start seeing both the power of lambdas and callables at the same time because callables avoid many errors lambdas allow you to do like very simple edits or changes so how can you use callables for your own purpose so if you go to help and look for callable you'll notice that there's like a lot of information one of them that i'll talk about now is this bind and also the call and call deferred uh, but you, you'll notice that even RPC and things related to networking will also be using callables very well in the future. But let's first use the, the bind portion of it. So I'll just return to my original code here and say you want to actually send another variable with timer timeout to this function here somehow. 
to do this you use bind so if i say bind something i'll just print this parameter also and you'll notice that the something will also be sent through this bind it's basically saying yeah I'll also send these parameters and it like you can just use a list of parameters here to send to your callable and the second thing is the call part so say you have a callable which is like this thing right here is a callable if you do this you call the method but you can also dot call the method whenever you want so in this format you will be able to define this callable in, in a dynamic fashion so just an example if i do this with something else this will run at first and will definitely seem boring or useless however this thing is a variable now and not just the function name which means that if i have say my methods i can even say i have these methods uh, method one and method two and now i can get from my method one call that thing so, so one will call the button zero will call this timeout thing so now you're, you're seeing a little bit more of the complexity this for example wouldn't work so with call you're able to do parameterized versions of whatever method you want to call and you'll notice that now you also have the ab ability to compare functions to know if they are the same or not since they are hashed functions or callables are able to be the keys of dictionaries so say you have a dictionary this works now you have a dictionary where the keys of the dictionary are callables or methods themselves uh, of course you can do the, the opposite for sure and now we have a dictionary of methods so back here in the documentation one other thing that you can do is create a new callable like this or like this so let me show how the second work so if you call callable you're able to say self and the method name on the like this is basically converting from the old style into the new and i'll just remove this and now i am able to call c with whatever i want and here you can see like i, I called this callable like this and obviously i'm using self here but you can imagine this self doesn't need to be self can be something else like some other node and you generate a callable from the other node over here so just to exemplify the simple things here in the in the callable i created a very simple state machine where i have say a dictionary with the states here are my states as stop walk and run random name names i start and walk i just say my last state is different from my current state it's how my logic works and i have a dictionary where each state has a specific method so basically in my stop i do nothing in my state i create a tween i move in the x and then go to stop in my run state i move in a different way and then go to walk where i do this and then go to stop and so on and so forth and in my process to have this logic i just check if my state changed if it changed i stop the previous tween update my last state and do the dot call as you know notice that here right here i'm instead of using lambda functions i'm using the with the bind and everything because it seemed that when i used lambda functions my self dot current state wasn't uh, updating properly but like this it updates so here it is you know, walk on x here my state is zero i'll go to two and then to one and then to zero so i have a very simple state machine with what 50 lines of code exactly <laughs> i could even take a little bit off but you now can see how simple this kind of thing is state machines because i can do say a reference to functions like this and of course use your imagination use this new format of using methods and functions as callables to your own advantage while coding things thank you for watching